Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my vlog, to my channel. Here on the bench today we've got another amplifier circuit that um, again has been bought from AliExpress and this one I uh, have high hopes for. Uh, this is the Quad 405. This is the T TO3 version which is these transistors rather than um, rather than the normal um, 220s and the 264s I think they are I'll have to put a correction up if I get that wrong uh, transistors and it's from an old quad uh, it's an old sort of 70s 80s British design um, this particular one which again has been uh, taken over by the LJM. Now this is what I want to just add with this is you can't get circuits for these. There's no circuit diagrams. Apparently you don't get them with any of them. So I've got an apology to make now. Because the circuit diagram that I put up on the MX50 SE uh, is not the correct one. It's the one that comes on the page when you buy it. But I did a transistor check once I saw written that you can't get these circuit diagrams. I did a transistor check as the easiest way for me to see whether it was the correct circuit or not. And no, there's a difference of one transistor. I can't remember which one's got it, whether the circuit's got the one extra or the schematic has, but that means it's a different schematic. So I apologize for that. I'm gonna put it up on the screen now, so we can just have a little quick look at the advert for this of AliExpress. And we'll just have a quick few moments on that. So here it is, and it's there in it's all its glory. It's a different colour, yes. Um, this says it's the upgraded version, 2019. Not sure what the upgrade is, it's possible. It's got this thing on the back of it. Oh, now everything's going slow here. Uh, that they've got a capacitor there. I don't know whether that was there in the original or anything like that. I'm not that familiar with these things. Um, it looks like it's, it can go from 30 to 50 volts. I've got a 32 volt input on it at the moment. I don't, I'm not going to push it to 50 volts um, because I don't have the ability to give it 50 volts. And we're not going to be doing a full power test at 50 volts anyway because I can't do it. And secondly, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter at this stage, but we can look at its frequency response. I don't know why they've not put it on the zero line. This is just the way they've had 10 dB at the top and plus seven down the bottom on their, um, on their screen. But if we look at this and say that this is a linear scaling down here, we can sort of see that, uh, well, not quite sure what we can sort of see, but that would suggest that that's like a half dB and this is a one dB, I think, because that's seven, eight, that's eight, six, uh, seven, six and eight, six. So you could sort of say there's one dB difference there. And then if we were gonna do sort of half of that near enough, we get a half dB difference rolling enough on the top and that's, at that one dB difference, I think that's what it's trying to show. Uh, this is a 15 hertz, but look what it's going to be like when we do the performance checks on it in a moment uh, could be completely different. So here we have uh, our fundamental uh, nice low level noise floor, which is all well and good. And that's it. So this is this is what you get. This is the actual one they sent out to me, the blue one. It comes with this bit of heat sink in here if you choose for it to come with a bit of heat sink in. I'm not sure whether the chips are originals or not, or genuine, I should say. It's possible they are, possible they're not. I've actually put genuine chips in just for the sake of it. And the inductors seem to be measured on a, um, on a decent inductor measuring thing. So let's just get out of that and do some tests because that's all we can do really we can listen for the sound of it but at the end of the day that can be very subjective and the numbers don't really lie so let's pull up our waveforms oh 
Let me see if I can get them both up. And I've got it set up a minute for one kilohertz going in. We're on zero volts and we're not running at all. Uh, we've got our RMS there, AC, and our peak to peak values are not what they seem. They're just where it was switched off, so that's just going to jump around a little bit. So we've got our voltage on, everything's on as it's supposed to be. Let's start with the test. Hit run, and we'll start up in our signal coming in. Now at the moment we're on 10 volts per division down here, but I'm in 10 times, which I shouldn't be on. We should be on one times. So let's start bringing that back in. Uh, we'll knock off the reference voltage to about 20. Uh, start bringing that in. As you can see now, we have these two distinct, but quite low down there. Let's have a look where they are. Can't quite get on there. Minus 90, minus 70. Let me just move this up slightly. Um, just drop that down to there. Okay, so the attenuation is there. I can't go any higher on the five volts thing, which I think I may have to switch over to 10 times anyway, but we'll, we'll soon see as I start going up on this. Right, I'm just gonna go into clipping so we can see it. Yeah, I'm just gonna back that off. Now this could be clipping because it's going off the screen. There's always that. We're going to see if that's why it happens. There's a possibility that's why that's happened. So I just need to flick over to 10 times on my probe. I'll flick over to 10 times here. Should really set that up properly. And we can continue going up. Because now, oh, we can see the clipping there. Just back that off. So we're really just out of the range of the clipping. Clips at the top first before it clips at the bottom. Let me see if I can get a bit more of that on the screen. Just bring this down. And we're using 1.2 amps. Let's just pull that out there. 1.29 amps. And we should just pop this across to five. All right, so that looks reasonable enough. This is before clipping. I'm gonna turn that off so we can take some pressure off the system. All right, and that's what we got over there. So that doesn't look too bad at all. I mean, when you look at the FFT, um, this doesn't really look too bad at all. Let me just shift this. Uh, we can forget about that just for a second. I don't know why that's just done that, but let me just shift this up here. Uh, we can look at that, it's at, uh, not quite at zero. That's okay. Minus 78, minus 73, that's on our three kilohertz. That's on our two kilohertz. Uh, minus 72, uh, that doesn't look too bad at all, really, does it? Doesn't look too bad at all. And if we were just to look at this, I really don't know how I managed to make that bigger like that. So I'm still playing around with this software a little bit, but that doesn't matter. We can still see that we weren't really into any clipping situation. You can see that by the FFT. So just with our 31 volts going in there, we managed to get 19.76. Uh, That's about 40 watts or so. I would pull up the calculator actually and just see what that actually says. Uh, 19 point, what was it, 76, we'll give it the 76, times 19.76 equals 319, divide that by the 8 ohm load that we got on there, okay, so that's 48 volts, 49 if you uh, allow it to be counted up, rounded up from that point, point 0.8, that's not bad, yeah, that's not bad at all. Now what we want to do now is we want to have a little look at it underneath the um, audio analysis software. So I'm just going to, I'll tell that just to save that like that. 
I'm just going to get rid of that. And we're going to just start up our virtual machine. This laptop's quite old, it's probably about eight now. Okay, if you can hear the, 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 the funny sounds in the background, it's my, uh, one of my cats has decided to use a bag that I had for delivery today uh, as a bed. I don't have the heart to kick him off it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take a peek at the frequency response. And uh, well, let's just actually give it a hit on the spectrum analyzer. We're gonna put a 0.2 VRMS into there and we are gonna have a little look on the spectrum analyzer and just see what it gives us. Now that's on five averages. So I'm just gonna turn this on to, yeah, I'll leave it on five averages and I'll just zoom through it for you. So when we look at this, it's fairly close. This is at 0 dB now, if you remember, uh, the other one wasn't. If you look at the top right hand of the screen uh, in the orange, just here, it shows you the dB value, and this is the frequency value. And you can see from the scale down here as well, the dB. And uh, from here is the, the frequency across the bottom. All right, so if I click that onto there, we well, can see it's slightly higher, but I believe that's just because we're at zero now, not at, um, uh, I think it was two before. All right, well, that doesn't seem to be particularly too bad. Now let's look, have a look at the frequency response. So this is what we're gonna be interested in. We wanna know how this thing goes from a low, we're gonna go from 10 Hertz up to 50 kilohertz. Right, just, we just want to see what it would do from there. So I'm going to run this. Oh, let's just put it onto one channel. Uh, 0.2 for RMS, that'll do. And we can have down the bottom. We're not going to need that amount. So we have three, four, three there, not the top. We're not really going to go above one dB. Maybe we can put just three there so we get a centralized image. Okay, right, so we get to see then it's, I mean, we have seen better performance from amplifiers, that's for sure. And um, this is uh, up here, it says 20 kilohertz. When I go across here, we started off at 10, remember? And we can say that we're 3 dB down, because that's what this is, is down here, it's 3 dB down, be further. Um, in fact, but then we've got our, um, this is at 11 hertz, this is at 13 hertz, and this is at 20 or 19.9. The, the measuring of this is, you know, is, is, is what it is. But we can see we've got a sort of slight rise there in response and that's not saying there's extra bass because the bass sort of drops off and then we got a, a sort of drop off here and this is 10k now i did notice that it starts dropping off on the on the website there at 15k and by the time we get to 20k but it doesn't seem to be particularly too bad i mean it's um, that can be worse. So we're going to do a THD, the total harmonic distortion plus the noise. And we'll do that at a uh, 100 steps, just like the last one. And uh, we've got an 8 ohm load there. Okay, so there we have it. Um, it takes a little bit longer on my end because I speed this up for you guys because I, I put this into 100 steps so we've got a bit more uh, resolution on what's actually going on. And I don't know if you can tell, but when you see these here, 
just so you get a bit better an idea of what this is going on in the background here, this is to show noise. And you see when it's all busy like this, this is when it has these little peaks. And when it drops off, you can see that it's not as busy. And then it has a little peak of noise and it gets busier, like over here. Uh, but I suppose that's because of the higher frequency, actually. And there's not so much noise, and I'll show you that in a minute, because this is the total harmonic distortion and the noise. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it onto a total harmonic distortion. And you get to see the... Uh, you take the noise out, look. And even though there are some little busy areas still, these little tiny peaks, it's not doing too bad. It's not doing too bad. Uh, this is at uh, 10 hertz. So that's still below 0.1. Uh, we go all the way to the 10 kilohertz. And it's all stayed below 0.1. And it's only to when we get to 20 kilohertz. We're going to 0.1 or 0.1. I keep trying to retrain myself. So 0 0.1, so that's not bad at all. And I know we've already done a little power test, but we might as well do that. One to 100 watts on here. And uh, we'll just do it in uh, 50 steps. We don't need to do that in 100 steps. And we'll just run that along pretty quick. Okay, so again, you can see down the bottom here, we've got our 10 watt marker there. We go from zero watts, it's uh, logarithmic, not so much linear. And we've got our percentages going up the side here, and I always get it to cut off at 1%, and that's where here it cuts off there at 1%, and it's saying 53 watts when we get to 1%. And so it's pretty much on the mark for what we measured in the sine wave for the... Um, um, for the uh, the power output and at this voltage 32 volts that's all we're using 32 volts so I say that's pretty good too now this is going to be the one we're going to look at it in a scope now but we're not going to look at it in the sine wave we're going to look at it in the square wave and first of all we'll check out at uh, 1000 hertz one, one kilohertz and we'll just do a single shot on it that's all we need to see Um, we can see there, if I just get rid of uh, that one on the next shot, let's just uh, do a signal again. Just get rid of the blue line for confusion. Um, now this one in indicates a small amount of um, treble. A small amount of overshoot, but it's not ringing, it's not doing anything dodgy. If we keep it on the run, we can see it's not doing anything dodgy. Very slight slope down. Very slight slow pop. Uh, nothing really to be um, too concerned with. Let's do a stop on that and let's just go down to, let's say, 100 hertz. Uh, we'll do a run on that. And there we can see that we got um, the base is starting to drop off a little bit, but not, I mean, it's not terribly bad. It's not a great sort, it's not a great square wave, is it? I mean, it'd be lovely to have this, you know, as a, as a square wave all along. I'm going to let you know now that I've actually listened to this. And I didn't think it sounded too bad, but I only listened to it on the bench here. And uh, things can be a bit subjective. So, and this is why we do it like this. This is why, you know, um, we're looking at it like this, because we want objectivity and not subjectivity. Now, to me, that again doesn't seem to be terribly too bad because it's, from what I can tell here, is 0 0.01 volts down. I probably need to find a way of uh, working this out better. Um, yeah, I can't, I, I need to know exactly what this drop off here. Uh, would really account to but as this is coming into the center line it doesn't look that great but you gotta remember right this is something that I try and keep into account as well but back in the day I'm gonna put it on 20 Hertz now 
back in the day, uh, 70s, 80s, let's just do a single hit on that. Uh, that's not too clever, is it? I mean, that's definitely not a square wave anymore. Let's just give it a run. No, that's not a square wave anymore. But back in the day, look, <laughs> from what I've learned is you could have had hi-fi back in the 40s, but today's stuff that's pretty cheap will beat that then. Why? Because there's more consumerism. Uh, they can build the things cheaper. In order for you to be able to buy a pair of speakers that would have gone down to 35 hertz back in the 70s, yeah, give you good representation down to 30 hertz, up to 30 kilohertz. It cost you an arm and a leg. It would have cost you now. You can buy it for a few hundred pounds. You can buy a pair of speakers for a few hundred pounds, and you can have that. And the same with amplifiers to be able to buy an amplifier that you get you down at those uh, low levels and up those highs, and it will be balanced out nice with a nice frequency response. Will cost you an arm and a leg, but these days. Uh, you can get pretty, you know, you can get what you had then as being really good, today, pretty damn cheap. So I don't look at this and just think to myself, well, it's all a big fail. Uh, let's just go to um, five, 5 kilohertz now. I don't see it as a, as a big fail, um, because it doesn't do as well as what some might think that it should. I don't know if you can hear the actual, uh, the actual circuit whistling. So I'm just going to put on to stop. And here, you know, you get to see this little bit of a uh, bit of trouble there, but you st still, you know, you you got the bass being represented there. Th these are quite. Uh, you've got to look at a lot of these things to be able to work them out properly. But you get to see, you know, we're trying to keep a square wave here for an old design for back then. And um, you know, I don't think it's. I mean, that doesn't look like the greatest square wave. That's at 10 uh, kilohertz. Yeah, I remember on its own thing at 15, it was like dropping off the side of a cliff. So we're going to hit it on 15 now. Yep, you know. Let's do it at 20. Oh, what did I do wrong? Okay, that's at 20 kilohertz, and let's go to 30, just see if it would have ever got there. To 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's at 30. Looks like a skewy sinusoidal. But there we go, with, um, you know, you can't expect, you can't expect these old circuits to give what some of the circuits would give today just because they're the older circuits. And uh, even though you want them to run quite nicely, now the difference is gonna be in the, I'm gonna do a, a, um, an audio test. I've already listened to it. I don't think it sounded too, too bad. In actual fact, from one that I've been listening to over the last week, the MX-50, I felt it lacked a little bit in the, in the sort of, the throttle clarity area was what I, I can hear with my other amp. I couldn't hear where that was the first thing I noticed. And, you know, you've got to go into these things critical. Because if you don't, if you're just thinking that, you know, everything's great, then, well, you've got to be critical and you've got to be honest with yourself as well. And even though I like it, it I can just use it one transformer, use it less power, the MX-50, um, it still lacks that little tiny bit that I could hear before. And uh, but it's, it, it, it it gives a, a bit of extra bass in it. It gives a little bit of extra uh, in in bits. But this is where it's going to get where people's own hearing because you you can have all these sharing the same thing on the frequency response and everything else. But the amplifier circuit is going to sound different they're, they're, because you've got parts, you've got components on the circuit. And there's some of them they're your resistors, stuff like that, make their own noise. Um, and so that's going to make a difference to what you get to hear at the end of the day from the circuit. So it's all going to be down to what do you decide you like the best. 
And that's, how, that's why I'm playing it for me. It's going to be harder for you guys at home because um, you're going to listen to it through my microphone and it's going to come out of your speakers and you've got to try and judge all of this stuff. And uh, I'm giving you what I think is my preference. I, I'm, but I'll tell you now, I'm on the flat level of I just want to go for is flat level. I don't want any um, equalising in there. I don't even want any equaliser switched on and put on flat because that still adds, let's say, colour or discoloration, depends on your philosophical bent on that type of thing um, I just want mine to be as close as darn it to what the artist had recorded it at that's what I want that's what I want personally uh, but everybody's different and that's the thing about these things everybody's different everybody likes to hear in their own way and um, but that's my bit so when I'm listening to it when I'm feeding back to you that's where I'm coming from that's my point on the ground where I'm coming from I want it as uh, as, as, as close to the uh, source as possible all right right that's it for the end of this it's gone on way too long uh, hopefully you got something out of it and I'll uh, catch you on the next one bye for now